this is Dan Bunker with CodeCram, and this is the beginning of a series of tutorials on primitive arrays in Java. Arrays are one of the most basic built-in data structures you can utilize in the Java programming language. To start off, primitive arrays in Java are a built-in data type. But what are they? An array is simply a group of things that have been placed in an order. The numbers 1 through 10 could make up an array. 1 is at the beginning and 10 is at the end. The numbers don't have to be in order though to make a proper array. An array doesn't have to contain numbers either. An array could contain strings or objects like squares or any other data type. Each element in the array is given an indexed position. Arrays begin at the zero position and increase by one as you move across the elements of the array. Always remember that when you're working with arrays, they are always going to be zero based. Now that you know a little bit about what an array is, I want to show you how to actually create them with the Java syntax. So I've jumped over to Spring Tool Suite, which is a Java based editor. And it's based off of the Eclipse IDE. You can find that at spring.io forward slash tools. So to start, I simply am going to create a new project just to hold the basic arrays for this particular tutorial and the follow on tutorials. So I can do that by right clicking in the package explorer selecting new Java project. I'm just going to call the project name Java dash array. At this point, I'm simply going to click finish. And I have a new project. The source package is where all of our Java code is going to go. So I'm going to select the source package, right click and just say new Java class. And the class name I'm going to give it is called array construction. Do you want it to be a executable Java class? I'm going to select the public static void main option and then click finish. Here we have a new Java class that can run. I'm going to just remove this comment, save this, and now I can begin defining some new arrays in the main method. The first way that you can create an array in Java is to explicitly declare it with the elements. That would look something like this. So this array just holds some simple numbers, one, two, three, and four. And to declare a primitive array in Java, you have to declare the type that it is. So in this case, I said, I want an array of integers. So the integer is my type, the square brackets following it, designate it as a primitive array. Numbers is the variable name. And then I specify that it's equal to the new integer array type. And in curly brackets, I give it the elements that I want to be in the array. You can also declare array similar to what I've done, but there's a shorthand version that you can do, and it looks similar to this. So this integer array called other nums is similar to the first one, except we just don't have to specify new integer with the curly brackets afterwards. We can simply just specify the curly brackets and the array contents. I've added two system.else to print each variable out, and to run this, I can simply right click on this class, go to run as Java application. Down here in the console, I'm going to double click this tab to expand it. You'll notice that the output is kind of interesting. It prints this square bracket L, then java.ling.integer, and then a memory address for each of those. Anytime you see a square bracket followed by L and then a type, that is the compiler telling you that you're dealing with a primitive array followed by the memory address of your primitive array. This isn't very helpful when you're trying to debug or look at what's inside of your array. So you actually have to tell the system not out to print the array in kind of a pretty format. So if I double click the console again, I can go back to the code. Here's how we can get the arrays to print out correctly. If you're familiar at all with Java, you might think that you could call dot two string on these variables to get the arrays to print out correctly. But if you call the dot two string, you'll end up with a similar message as shown in the console with the array type and its memory address. Java provides an arrays helper class that you can use to print out the array. So I'm going to declare this class. It's called arrays plural. And I'm going to call two string on it and pass in the array. You'll notice the IDE pulled in java.utilArrays, which is this class, automatically for me as an import up here at the top. 
you don't have the import up there, the compiler is not going to like that and will throw an error. So I've wrapped both arrays with the arrays.toString. I can now rerun this by clicking the plus sign here, or not the plus sign, but this forward slash arrow thing, and it will rerun the main class. Now if you look in the console, we have properly printed arrays. You can also declare an array by giving it a size, but not initializing the elements. You can do that by doing something like this. So this line declares an empty string array. So string is our data type. It's a primitive array. And we've set it equal to the new string, but in the square brackets, we've now given it a size, saying we want a string of size 5. So I'm going to go ahead and print this out using the arrays to string, just so you can see what has been initialized with this statement. Here's the system.out for it. I'll go ahead and rerun the program. And you'll notice that it declared an array with five spaces, but each of the element positions are null. One thing to keep in mind with primitive arrays in Java is that the size that you declare is kind of set in stone. So if I initialize it with so many elements, it's going to be size 4 for this first example. This one was set to size 5 because it gave it a specific size, but if I don't specify a size, it's set to an empty array with size 0. Arrays do not grow and decrease dynamically like other classes like an array list. So you have to keep in mind when you're initializing the array how big you want it to be. And that's basically it for array declarations. If you wanted to populate this empty array with something, you would have to loop through the string array and put the strings into each position in a loop or some other mechanism. Again, arrays are your most basic data type in Java. So understanding them and knowing how to work with them are key to being a great Java programmer. Thanks for watching, and if you like this and other tutorials on Java and programming languages, be sure to check out more at codecram.com.